Have you ever looked at someone doing something physical and thought, dang, that person would make a good climber? This is a common thought experiment with sports fans as cross-training has reduced the gap between seemingly different sports. Bo Jackson played both football and baseball. NFL players are experiencing success in mixed martial arts. And summer Olympian athletes like Lolo Jones are transitioning to winter Olympic sports like the bobsleigh. Whenever I see a new climber picking up the sport quickly, I always ask them what their movement background is. I get a variety of answers, but also a few commonalities. This video will explore those different sports that climbers come from, as well as a few others that translate best to the wall. We can all agree that gymnasts are some of the most impressive athletes in the world. Their combination of strength, flexibility, and body awareness is unrivaled in other sports. It shouldn't come as a big surprise that some of the top climbers in the world come from a gymnastics background. Among them include Margot Hayes, Emily Harrington, Megan Martin, Brooke Rabatou, Alex Mangos, and Tomoe Narasaki, to name a few. Even old school legends like John Gill and Wolfgang Gulick understood the importance of using gymnastics to train the body. Why does this sport translate so well into climbing? Gymnasts are the masters of body tension. The very nature of their movements demands an incredible amount of upper body strength. This is heavily stressed in the shoulders and core, which are used to stabilize the body in many isometric strength holds. These same muscles are frequently used in climbing, especially when keeping body tension doing hard moves. Pulling is also a key movement in gymnastics. Apparatuses like high bar, uneven bar, and still rings allow for gymnasts to develop a high degree of pulling power and scapular strength. Add this to the other benefits of full range flexibility and hyper body awareness and you have one of the best sports to translate into climbing. In his book The Push, Tommy Caldwell talks about two different styles of climbing, dancing on the wall and wrestling with the wall. This is the inspiration for these next two picks. In classical dance, focus is put on footwork and alignment. This is best demonstrated in ballet, the most famous form of classical dance. Look at any ballerina and you'll immediately notice her strong toes, precise footwork, and perfect posture. This precision with the feet is one of the reasons why dancers can quickly excel at climbing. As climbers, we all know the value of utilizing good footwork. This technique can unlock some impossible moves or afford you the conserved energy to finish a long climb. Modern dance is a bit more eclectic and has a lot more varied attributes. We'll pick breaking as its representative since the dance is close to my heart. B-boys and B-girls are some of the craziest athletes I've seen in any sport. As there are no set boundaries in breaking, its dancers can perform an endless continuum of movements. From traditional footwork, to power, to freeze combinations, blow-ups and tricks, and even creative contortionism. In short, breakers are very well-rounded athletes and are hyper-aware of their bodies. This should be very translatable to the more thuggish or dynamic parts of climbing. Another reason that dance light translates well into climbing is the aspect of choreography. Dancing is one of the few physical activities where you have to remember long sequences of specific movements for a performance. This is very similar to a climber rehearsing the beta on a long route. Being able to commit dozens or even hundreds of moves to both cognitive and muscle memory is well within a dancer's ability. The mention of wrestling may draw up images of big beefy dudes slamming bodies onto the canvas. How can a brutal sport like this translate into climbing? On the physical side, wrestlers are remarkable athletes. They're able to engage their bodies quickly and fully, putting forth long bouts of endurance mixed in with explosive power. They also have an innate understanding of how best to apply leverage. Sound familiar? Think about a hard compression boulder problem or a strenuous off with climb and you can picture how a wrestler could excel in those movements. On the mental side, wrestlers are some of the most disciplined people out there. The sport has a deep history spanning thousands of years and has been touted as a key life skill by Greek philosophers like Socrates and Plato. They made wrestling mandatory for their kids because they knew that the sport developed important characteristics like discipline, humility, and good work ethic. One look at how rigorous the training is and you can see that wrestlers excel at one thing, embracing the grind. Nowhere is this more applicable than in trad climbing. The nature of using jams and locks instead of relying only on fingers to pull creates a whole different kind of fatigue that separates trad from sport. 
Adam Andre said that when you're tired in sport climbing, your hands open and you fall. With trad, the fatigue is distributed differently and the fight can go on for much longer. For some climbs, like off widths or chimneys, one can literally will their way through the climb if they're determined enough. That's where the wrestler's mindset comes in. This one is a pretty obvious choice considering the modern landscape of competition bouldering. Love it or hate it, this newer style of climbing involves some very flashy and complicated movements. On top of falling strength, climbers have to demonstrate proficiency in jumping, balanced running, and multi-limbed coordination. Parkour is a niche sport with a pretty rich history. Originally created to navigate an obstacle course, its core philosophy was finding the most efficient path possible. The practitioners, called tracers, used a blend of running, jumping, swinging, and climbing to steer their way through a variety of structures, all while doing their best to keep their flow and rhythm. The technical blend of movements and parkour is very translatable to modern bouldering, but even more fitting is the mental commitment in those moves. There's no room for hesitation in parkour. You size up the move and go for it with 100% focus and commitment. If you're in the middle of a run, decisions and adjustments have to be made on the fly, and you don't stop until you reach your final objective. Okay, this might be a stretch, but when I watched those videos, I couldn't help but think, man, that guy would have some serious crimp strength. Traditional martial arts practitioners are just straight badass. Some of their training methods are so crazy that I just shake my head in disbelief. Who willingly puts their body through this kind of stuff? These guys probably look at climbing not as a difficult sport, but just as a means of getting somewhere quickly. Crazy training aside, I think these guys would be good climbers just from all the skills they can perform. Full range flexibility, incredible balance, dexterity, and just impressive levels of athleticism. Not to mention their choreographies are some of the craziest routines I've ever seen. I mean someone is literally thrusting a spear at your head over and over. That can't be any less dangerous than free soloing. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was one of those random topics that I think about and I, I appreciate you joining me in this thought experiment. If you have any sports or activities that you think translate well into climbing, please tell me about them in the comments below. And until next time, move better, climb harder.